fake it till you make it in a lot of areas, yeah. particularly if you're working for somebody else. But at the end of the day, um, if you're going to be great at something, you've got to make the effort to be great at something. Um, whether it's sports, whether it's physics, math, science, business, whatever it may be, you know, it's not just a natural skill. You've got, you've got to, to learn, and particularly if you're in the technology industry, because it changes every day. You know, when I got started, and, and you know, after I got, I, I got, a, I was a bartender when I first came to Dallas, got into the PC industry, got fired, started my own company, but there, I learned early on that there was always something new, and most people didn't put in the time to learn it. It's like now with artificial intelligence. Lots of people talk about artificial intelligence. Lots of people talk about machine learning and neural networks. Not a lot of people are putting in the time to take classes or do the tutorials or to, to learn how to apply it to business. And that's what it takes. And, and you know, that's just something I've always enjoyed. So I, I've been fortunate. You know. I always say this, it's like fitness first because fitness is gonna make business so much easier. Mm -hmm. If you walk in a room and you're in shape, people respect that. You know, they automatically respect that. And you're creating a healthy body, which is going to give you a healthy mind, you know? So you're going to be sharper mentally. So I, I put fitness in front of business all day. Because why do business if you're not in good shape? You know, when you could have a machine that's like really spitting out, you know, productive thoughts and, you know, actions, and you can keep it, you're, you're locked yeah. in, you know? You're turned on. What I've typically learned is um, things that, right give you upfront pleasure typically almost always 100%. lead to back end pain 100%, yeah. but things that give you you know pain, pain up front, front they give you typically pleasure, give yeah. you back end yeah. pleasure right That's whether true. it's building a business saving money gratifying gym. going to the gym uh delayed gratification is a beautiful thing yeah. um which is why i think the gym is so important especially in today's day and age where we live in an instant gratification world the gym is one of the few things left where you have to exercise this ability to have delayed uh gratification i believe that we have demonized losing when losing is the best. Mm -hmm. Like for me, it was school was telling me I was gonna be a failure. So you have grown ups left and right, friends, parents, and yeah. teachers. You will be a garbage. I remember the favorite thing back in the 80s, you're gonna be a garbage man. Big shout out to the garbage yeah, men exactly, and women, first yeah. of all. But that was the cliche thing in 84 mm -hmm. to 87. Like, I can't wait to be, like, I'm gonna be garbage. Like, they, like, they just really, it was only college, it was only grades. So that, and then I competed 24 seven. I was always competing. And when you compete all the time, you're losing a lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I cried. I cried from six to 12 every time I lost in anything. Video games, checkers, Uno, football, because I hated the feeling, but the, the, the layers of skin that I have, you know, and that makes sense to me about you. You can't be out there at the level we're out there. If you don't have that stomach, you won't do it. You won't put yourself, we all now can. Everybody can put themselves out there. People won't do it if they don't have that layer of skin. And I, you know, I, I agree with you. Like, and it's a tough challenge, but we have to get kids to like get comfortable with losing. In any kind of game position, so like in business, right? Every position has advantages and disadvantages. And a lot of people look at the really big guys and they're like, man, they uh they they like they're they'll look at me like must be easy for Alex, right? And I remember when we had uh Jim Watch and we had a very big company. I would tell the guys who are coming up, I was like, if you're trying to compete against me, I was like, you have advantages. I was like, if you're on a sales call, you're like, listen, you're just a number to Alex. You're never going to talk to Alex, right? Here with me, you're going to get my attention. I'm the one, right? I was like, that's how you're going to throw stones at me. I was like, but on the flip side, if it's me marketing to the masses, I'm going to be like, this kid's in his mom's basement. He has no idea what he's doing. He's been in business for 12 months. And of course he has no idea. Like, wouldn't you want somebody who has thousands of success stories behind it because we've made a system? Like both sides have advantages. And so what happens is people are in this small position where they're more nimble, they can give more personalized attention to people, et cetera. And they see it as a pure disadvantage. And so you can flip the fact that you have nothing going for you with you have nothing to lose. And that means that you can take lots of risks very quickly and end up in the exact same position you are, which is nothing. And so if you eliminate downside, it should decrease your action threshold, meaning you should be able to do more things faster rather than do fewer things because you don't have a great life or things going for you. And so I think if people flip that, a lot more people would take action because they actually realize the advantage of their position.